So four months, Singapore, Vietnam, uh, Philippines, and you're forgetting the world. You got the amnesia via adventure. Right? Yeah. So you know, all these adventures are giving you the, the amnesia and the, the reset. At what point do you wake up one day and you're like, you know what? It's time to go home. It's time to be a cage fighter again. And when you do decide to go home, why did you decide to go home? When did you wake up? And then when you do, what's different about Brian Caraway because of that adventure? So two, two questions there. <clears throat> well, first of all, the reason why I decided to go home is a couple different reasons. For one, I, you know, I, I saw all the countries I wanted to see. You know, I think I saw six or seven countries. Mm -hmm. I saw pretty much all of Southeast Asia. I had to do everything I wanted to do kind of on that trip. Another reason, my buddy Tom, who I met in Cambodia, I said earlier, from England, that was his time for him to go home. So I was like, he was kind of my buddy. So when he was leaving, I was like, <laughs> like we became so close on this trip, sharing like motorcycles and breaking down and just partying and meeting people and sharing so many experiences together. When he was kind of leaving, I was, I was kind of sad, like, oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to stay anymore and have any adventures without you. And so that was kind of like a good sign for me to, to come back home. And then I realized, you know, the responsibility bug kicked in and said, you know, I probably should get back and take care of some stuff. You know, I, I my shoulders feeling better. You know, I have a fight to get back and win and train. I'm not getting any younger. And, uh, you know, I decided to come back. When I came back, I, I felt um, I felt refreshed. You know, I got kind of a new fire underneath me. Uh, it made me actually miss the sport. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I forgot about it that whole time, but it made me miss it. It made me want to grapple. I wanted to be in the gym. I, like, you know, I, I've been fighting for 14 years for a lot of people who don't know. I have 43 fights. And uh, I've just been doing it for a long time. I've been wrestling since I was 11. And... Uh, I needed that. I needed that break because I, I hadn't had that much passion when I came back. I, I missed grappling so much. I missed sparring. I missed seeing the team. I missed the camaraderie. I missed getting punched in the face. I missed getting a fat lip. I missed waking up my back hurting. It was weird as it sounds. I did. I missed it. I missed hurting. I missed my neck hurting because it made me feel alive. When you're hurting like that, you feel, uh, for me anyway, I feel accomplished. Like I'm doing something. Okay, my neck hurts because I'm getting a choke. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm building my character. I'm working through adversity because my body's hurting. I'm making my body stronger. I'm making my mind stronger. And I just miss that. You know, I miss being in there. I miss competing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I made it to, to being top 10 in the world for a reason. You know, I, I'm competitive. I learned that about myself. Like, you know, man, even when I retire, I think I'm always going to have to be around martial arts because I love it. I realize that's why I'm It's I'm interesting. You went, you went to a part of the world, too, Asia. Which has a great martial arts tradition, even you know Thailand, and mm -hmm. you know there's some great, great martial arts. Even though UFC and MMA is sweeping, and and the cradle of that now is more Brazil and America, but nevertheless, um, but no, no martial arts while you're over in Asia. Right? Well, I did a seminar in uh, Singapore, and then I went and trained in Phuket. Um, in Thailand, and then I also trained in Koh Samui. Mm. Um, so you were able to pick up a few things, right? right yeah, I trained there, and I trained with a uh, super pro Muay Thai over there. And the Alistar Overeem just did a seminar literally like the day mm. before I came there. So they were awesome. They were, it was a really awesome gym, and I didn't say anything. I just came in there, did my thing. I was just mixing with the classes, and then finally at the end, I didn't think anybody knows. And finally at the end, I had like a lot, bunch of line of like English and Irish people that recognize me want to take some pictures which I thought was really cool how, how are you different I know you came back more motivated and but how are you different as a person how does four months in Asia partying too I mean you yeah. you, you had you, yeah, let, you let yeah, loose yeah, you yeah. had a lot of party how does that change the way you see the world the way you change change the way you see yourself I yeah. know you said look I decided look I really do love you know like you want to be in the martial arts forever now, you know. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't always know that now, but because you know, it gets to be grueling and monotonous Absolutely. and tedious. But you realize how much you love it. But also, how did it change the way you see yourself, the way you see the world? Hey, you know, I, it was such a huge cultural experience. You know, I've got to travel quite a bit with UFC, but not quite like this. When you go to the UFC, you stay in posh five star hotels. You get to do this. You have signings, all this stuff. And this is the first time that I, you know, I actually stayed in South Bend, North Vietnam. I stayed with a Vietnamese family. Um, you know, I just asked around like some guys like, hey, I want to stay with like an actual family. Is that possible? Can I? And they're like, yeah, there's a few families that call them homestays. And uh, so I stayed with a Vietnamese family. I had to hike 14 miles in with my backpack in the middle of North Sapa, which is close to China. And uh, I didn't know it was 14 miles. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go on a hike here 14 miles later. Holy moly. But to be able to stay with their family, there's, there's a husband, a wife, and three little boys, and to, to see how they live every day. They cook their food on an open fire. Um, just to see all that, the, the culture in India, the culture in, in Cambodia, it just, 
I don't know, it just it opened me up to make me appreciate what we have here in the United States even more so. Like what I was appreciating before, you kind of would look at, you know, your hard comings or shortcomings when you're a kid. Like, oh, I didn't have this or I didn't have that. And you compare it to what other kids have. And it's easy to do. And then you go there and you see all that kind of stuff. And it makes me think, like, dude, I freaking love America. Like, we have our problems and we have, you know, just like everybody else. But, like, there's nowhere else I'd rather be than here. Like, the opportunities that we have here, even the opportunities that poor kids have here, mm -hmm. like, poor, poor, poor kids have here is absolutely ridiculously advantageous compared to a country like, you know, Cambodia or those other countries. Um, so I just, I got a lot, a lot more cultural experience, you know, um, from that. And it just made me feel, I, I think, a little bit more humble uh, in that aspect. Um, you know, just seeing all that things and, and more appreciative, I guess. You know, I used to take things, you know, a little, little bit for granted. And, and uh, going through all that made me really appreciate uh, what we had. I guess I, I would say it was like a cleansing almost, mm -hmm. kind of like a spiritual cleansing. And now forever I want to go back to Asia once a year and just kind of reset myself, like get away and kind of live a little bit more, uh, you know, basic and, and just be more kind of in tune, not so much worried about social media and your phones and this and that and emails and just kind of live in the nature and eat more natural, healthy, organic food. I actually didn't gain what it, to what I found. They, they, they don't, they don't, organic doesn't necessarily it's exist. Not even, yeah, it's, it's just, just that's really good, is. real food. Yeah, it's yeah. just not organic. Yeah, there it's is no organic. Food. Yeah, it's real yeah. Exactly. So it's if you have mentioned organic, they're probably like, uh, unless yeah. they're a, a, you know, from Europe or America, they're probably like, yeah. It's just a real apple. <laughs> exactly. Like, There's no is... need for organic. Organic is the invent this invention in a country that, you know, chemicalizes food and yeah. puts toxins and things that were never That's intended to be point. in the food. Um, but interesting thing. So I've talked about this with fighters. Um, I've seen many fighters where um, someone dies on them and they fight better. But you get a heavy heart for whatever reason, whatever things you're dealing with. It can be hard to go into a cage and fight when you're... When you're that distracted, it can be really hard, guys. You're, you're going into a cage, and so you're saying, like, look, I really, you're admitting, I really wasn't ready, whatever you were dealing with. You're like, I'm not ready to go. I don't have it in me right now to go into a cage and, and do that because I'm just distracted or whether it's your, your heart's yeah. affected, whatever. It's, it's, it's a tough game. It's a game where somebody, it can end where someone goes to the emergency room and somebody get knocked unconscious. And so you're just, there's times where you're like, look, I'm not in a place in my life. And I've seen this with many players. I've seen this. This is not mental weakness, guys. I've seen the mentally toughest of the tough where they get hit in the heart by something. Absolutely. And it's hard to go to training. And you just lose that something for a while to want to fight and Absolutely. go beat somebody up. Don't want to do anything. You know, heartbreak and things like that is, is it's interesting. When someone dies, you can say, you know. They wanted me to win this. You, yeah. they, they wanted me to fight. There's no way they're going to tell me not to fight. They, they right. want to honor them. I can honor them. I can make them proud. I can go out there, and it gives you something to drive. If you have a heartbreak, and, and for whatever reason, uh, someone left you or whatever, you, you don't say, I'm going to go out there and win for that person or whatever. It doesn't. Right. There, there's no There's no motivation to go out there besides your self-motivation right. just to go and do it for yourself. Right. And at that time, like you don't really even you know, care about anything else, You know, almost yourself. You're so down. It's hard to focus. It's hard to eat. It's hard to... to you know, just get through a normal day at that time, you know what I mean? Like, you get so used to a certain occasion and, 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 and a certain routine of life and then everything gets ripped away from you. It's it's uh, it's a really tough experience, you know. It's really, really hard to uh, deal with that. Like, your brain can't focus on anything else, you know, except for trying to be, you know, emotionally stable, you know, right? You don't have any patience or any time for anything else. And mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a gut-wrenching experience, you know. It's definitely different than someone dying or or having a hardship, or your house burning down, or some those things are, you know, can be replaceable. You know, materialistic things. You know, if someone dies on you, they're gone forever. You can't change that. It's sad, but you can also fight in their honor. You can fight for them to, to say, you know, they want me to do this. But when, um, you know, anytime, even in school, like rejection from dates or anything like that, rejection is one of the hardest things we deal with. Heartbreaks because that person's still there, and and. They're rejecting you. I mean, it's still you, 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 your mind can play yeah. a trick on you too. That yeah, maybe, absolutely. maybe if you do something different, you can get, you can get That's a yes. Absolutely. You can get a yes, or you absolutely. can get, you can change the result. So it it, it messes with you too in, in that regard. Whereas the finality of someone died is exactly there's the, there's the closure there. That's a, the closure. That's what I was yeah, thinking of. You so get that closure. That's it's really tough, man. I have just a lot of there's multiple things going on in my life at that time uh, with family, uh, with personal relationships. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, and then injuries on top of that. It just seemed like everything kind of came down on me, and I just didn't. I didn't even want to see a familiar face, even if it was somebody I was a good friends with. I didn't want to see my best friend. I didn't want to see, you know, even my parents because I didn't want to see anything that reminded me of my life. Actually, I just couldn't even take seeing like, 
oh, here's my best friend. Now I have memories with, you know, this or this or that. Like, I didn't want it. I just wanted to go away and just completely have nobody else that I know so I could start over. No one, you know, essentially knew. I mean, there's people who knew I was, but mm -hmm. but essentially just force myself to kind of get out of my shell, you know, to get out and go Cauliflower talk. Cauliflower stranger. <laughs> Can't hide your your profession when you got the when you walk around with those ears, but so human motivation because you talked about Brian guys who if you haven't seen him Brian's one of those guys I say there are athletes who from afar you watch them from afar and you're like yeah that guy's not a or that girl's not a great athlete, uh, but then when you roll with someone like Brian or you train with them very crafty great we were talking earlier about proprioception. Great sense of balance, great sense of where to line up on the body, you know, where exactly to be, how to move your weight. Just as almost like a sixth sense uh, kind of athlete. And it doesn't always show up in the explosivity or incredible speed. There are these other athletic attributes that the untrained eye doesn't see. But when you're down in the trenches and you're training with a guy like this, you're like, wow, he's crafty. He's doing unorthodox, right? Doing things, thinking quick always in the right place, right time. I, I put Brian in that category of athletes. But you've said, again, very cerebral, crafty athlete, that, hey, you weren't always motivated to be the best, the best. You weren't, you know, you work with Robert Falls. He is a great motivator. He does great at, the, at, at giving his athletes a sense of urgency. But now, coming off that trip, getting ready for a big fight with I think Luke Sanders. Yeah, Luke Sanders, Sanders, really tough kid. Um, you know, you're saying, look, you're the hungriest you've been and you do want to be the best. You do want to be a world Absolutely. champ. Talk about where you were before with that motivation and then where, that shift, where, why you're like, no, now I, I have to be the best I can be. I'm hungrier than I've ever been. Absolutely. You know, I get a lot of flack because, like, you made a good point. People can't really see. You can't see pressure. You can feel mm -hmm. pressure. You can't, you can't really feel that. And a huge, a huge part of fighting is, is feeling, feeling the person's body, the position, you know, uh, being having good proprioception, which is your body's you know awareness and time and space, knowing mm -hmm. where things are, and then also the fight IQ, huge huge part that I that I feel like I'm the strongest at is understanding uh, an IQ of understanding what someone's gonna do. Like a lot of times when I'm fighting or grappling somebody, I know what they're gonna do three or four steps before they even know what they're gonna do. I know what they're gonna do because I'm gonna make them do that because there's three different types of people. There's an A type grappler, a B type, and a C type. An A type grappler I know will make these choices based off of what I do. A B type will make this choice, and a C type will make that choice. And as I start doing, I start doing like deductive like reasoning and I start breaking down things like, okay, I'm gonna use this and I'm putting like checks and balances. Okay, this person responds here. And I start setting things up like that. You can't see those things are happening. You think, oh, well that guy just turned and gave his back and he got lucky. Or this this type of pressure, but you can't feel that. As far as somebody like an athlete, you know, like a, uh, a very physically physical appearance athlete or somebody who's very explosive, you know, a lot of people judge athleticism off of appearance, uh, the way you look or the way you move. Uh, that's why they have the combine. I mean, right. the combine, they, they, yeah, they all they're doing is repping 225 pounds for how many times, how much can they bench, how much can they squat, all that. But what is that going to show them or awareness on the field? You know, like how is guy is that guy gonna be able to read the offense? You know, how that's a that's a completely different factor. Yeah, he might be able to be the strongest, fastest, most athletic guy in the combine and he's like, This guy's an athlete. But if he doesn't have the brain to be able to read plays, that's mm -hmm. another half that you can't really see. You know what I mean? So that's where I felt like I shined in the part. Call that I, reading and recognizing. Yeah, exactly. These athletes are like quarterbacks. They can read and recognize and diagnose situations. And Brian, you do a really good job of that. That that's where I feel like I shine, but people don't really give credit for that because I'm not some crazy explosive buff ripped guy and uh, doing that but I always knew that I could be that you know that that's an easy remedy you can't fix your brain you can't become you know I mean you can study and you can train but there's a certain point of awareness and, and being cerebral that's uh, you know it's like saying it's hard to train heart you know it's like I have that aspect and the part I was missing was always pushing myself lifting weights doing strength conditioning because I was the always off season yeah, you're, 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 in the you're off all season. in during camp yeah, but you, you were saying to, during yeah. the during the off season Absolutely. you were not pushing in as yeah. hungry as you wanted to be and now you've shifted why why did you shift to that what well, what, you know, what what changed that I, I knew I could be a great I could be a world champion you know and I knew there was a lot of things I knew I wasn't doing I wasn't doing strength conditioning off season I wasn't working on my strike I wasn't doing anything because I like my mind's going too crazy I like motocross I like mountain biking I like traveling I like seeing things and, the and ADD my body athlete. Would, yeah my body <laughs> would get I would get too uh I don't know to like anxiety if I was doing it so much. And uh, it just got that shift because being away from martial arts made me realize uh, how much I miss and love it. And then also, I'm getting a little older and I realized like, you know what? How old are you? I'm 33, I'm just okay. turned 33 this year. And I realized, Washington you know, State here? I, I think I knew I had time before and, and that's why I'm like, I have time, I have time, and I have time. And now I'm realizing like, okay, now it's go time. 
and uh, being away made me realize the love and the passion I had for.